Joining us now is Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota. Senator, it's good to see you again. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, I, I have to wonder, you, you, you get so granular. It's my pleasure Thank to have you, you here. Elaine, I enjoyed it. Thank you. You, you. you get so granular in your discussions, and I'm grateful that you do. But, but if you pull back, the, the issue is, in hearing after hearing, there's an issue with tech companies writ large, not just Facebook, and the fact that they... They are helpful in some places and they're handy in some places, but they're really dangerous. And, and Roger McNamee was, was asking whether or not there should be something like the FDA for technology in America, something that says this is dangerous, this is unsafe, and, and we need to figure out a way to regulate it. So I'm hoping that we broke uh, the trend today. The trend is hearings. Um, maybe we get great information. Maybe the senators ask probing questions or the House member, and nothing happens yep. because every corner you turn is a lobbyist. More and more people uh, that are paid for by tech that come up to the senators, that show up at fundraisers, and big surprise, nothing's gotten done. Uh, and I think this witness today, Frances Haugen is her name, um, I think she's going to be a catalyst for change. Maybe people just had a step back sitting in that Senate hearing room and say, wait a minute, this is my kids. This is my grandkids. They literally, as we found out, are putting profits in front of people. That is their own profit model, collecting data on you, targeting you with ads. And lo and behold, more suicidal thoughts on behalf of these young girls, targeting really bad information when it comes to eating disorders to kids. Um, and I think this is the moment that we needed because what can we do? Privacy legislation. A complete change in our economy over the last decade. No change to federal privacy legislation. We need to do something about our competition policy alley. That is what I've been advocating for. So these dominant platforms can't decide to put their own products at the top or uh, do things that will exclude competitors from succeeding um, at the cost of competition. And then finally, uh, we have to do something more to protect kids online and make these algorithms, which literally give profits to these companies to make them more transparent. So uh, some of this, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. In fact, it's, it seems to be a bipartisan slam dunk, right? In the world before the world we live in, and you've actually been dealing with this for a long time, while there were actually people you could get on both sides of the aisle into this. Why isn't this, why doesn't this have overwhelming majorities in the, in the House and the Senate of people who sort of get off the soapbox about whether conservatives are being hidden behind certain things on social media and just say these things that you just outlined, uh, algorithms, uh, privacy, uh, antitrust, these seem to be easy. <laughs> well, they're not easy, and the companies have thrived on the fact that they're not easy. Um, and it, when things aren't in immediate crisis sometimes, and maybe people are starting to view what's happening to our democracy, what's happening to our kids as they make them addicted to these platforms, maybe they are starting to see this as a crisis, and that will precipitate action. So what do I see? One, there's bipartisan support for increasing resources to the agency. You asked about an agency uh, for the Federal Trade Commission and for the Department of Justice Antitrust Division. Senator Grassi and I passed a bill through the Senate that will add over $100 million to these agencies for enforcement. Uh, number two, there's bipartisan support, as you could see, from the work of Senator Blumenthal and Senator Blackburn, Senator Markey, others, on doing stuff to protect kids. Uh, there is bipartisan action growing over in the House with Cicilline and Buck and with Senator Lee and uh, myself and many others to finally take on competition policy. Um, and again, that means stopping this exclusionary conduct. Um, where we learned with the app stores that they're charging certain companies like Spotify and Match.com 30% of the revenues. This is from Apple and mm -hmm. Google. And finally, the privacy. That has been so incredibly frustrating. Recently, Apple said to their customers, okay, you can, we'll protect your data and it's your choice. 75% chose to protect their data, yeah. chose to not have their data be spread. We know what those numbers. That's why the rest of these platforms aren't doing this. And I think that has to change. Uh, there was a Facebook post by Mark Zuckerberg, with whom you have spoken many times uh, in, in testimony. Uh, he said, the argument that we deliberately push content that makes people angry for profit is deeply illogical. We make money from ads and advertisers consistently tell us they don't want their ads next to harmful or angry content. And I don't know any tech company that sets out to build products that make people People angry or depressed. The moral business and product incentives all point in the opposite direction. 
Um, is that, what, do you, what do you make of that? Uh, first of all, uh, he was welcome. You know, we'd love to see him, but he was sailing today. But the second thing I would like to say is that the witness, the whistleblower, so well addressed this. She said, look, they might not have intended to make their profit that way, but the metrics, they give everything to these metrics and they base it on the most heated and polarized content, negative content, as you know, and that's what gotten out. And they have not done enough to police it. The whistleblower who worked within the company has suggested something like only 10 to 20 percent at most of this content gets caught. She talked about the fact that the violent content, they don't have enough, as I asked in that original question that you played, human eyes, people looking at this. Yet this is an over trillion dollar company, Ali. And they don't have enough people moderating this content and looking at this content. And so he may not have intended this, but what he intended to do, he's done. And that makes tons of money to the tune of $50 for every user per quarter. That is a stats they just put out. On you, Allie, 50 bucks yeah. a quarter. That's what they're making by getting your data. That last point you made is interesting because it's a very low-tech problem, the fact that they don't have enough human eyes to, to curate this stuff. Senator, always good to talk to you. Thank you.